Lord Jesus. And therefore, Lord, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover the atmosphere, the environment, Lord, with the blood of Jesus. We cover the congregation, Lord, with the blood of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jacob, O oh, King of all kings, in the name of Jesus, we adore you and we praise you. For this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You see a binguni yo. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us have our blessing seat. Mr. Grace, please. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm so blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity once again. Uh, for this young man to stand before you that I may minister to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also want to thank the administration, the leadership of this ministry for giving me this opportunity so I don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. So standing before you, as I always say, it encourages me. Hallelujah. It gives me the boldness. Hallelujah. For I know I have God has a great plan for me. Hallelujah. Ah. So that is my vision. What about your vision? So, for those who are new, my name is Brother Nelson Molati. I'm a born again. And I love Jesus as my personal Savior. Hallelujah. So, Hapa kuna mkalemani, anetua Sister Grace, hallelujah. So, let us go to the book of Hebrews chapter 2, chapter chapter 3 verse 2. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect or if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who had him, hallelujah. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 The Bible says uh, Let us go there Philippians 2 verse 12 Therefore my beloved As you have always obeyed Not as in my presence only But now much more in my absence Work out your salvation with fear and trembling Tell your friend work out Work out you are, sal you are on with salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure hallelujah, hallelujah. so some Sundays back we started a series by the title salvation and I say that that the study of salvation is known as soteriology. Soteriology. So, and I said that we need to work out our salvation. For if you don't work out our salvation, then we are a dead church. And therefore the vultures are gathering. This is the reason why the Bible says, how shall we escape? If we neglect this so great salvation, tell, turn to your neighbor and tell him or her are you working out your salvation and we say that salvation is deliverance of, of humankind from sin and its consequences and we spoke different types or different definitions of being born again I remember we spoke about the, the elements of salvation Hallelujah. Amen. And we also say that salvation is a grace, is a, is a, is a gift. It is a grace. 
For we were saved by grace. In the book of in the book of John chapter 1. The Bible says there was a man known as John the Baptist. And this man he came to bear witness to the light. And this is what John the Apostle says. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. And therefore, John the Apostle was confirming the message of John the Baptist. Because the purpose of John the Baptist was to prepare the coming of the Lord. And he said, verse 14, and the word became flesh. And dwell among us. And we beheld his glory. And the glory is of the only begotten of the Father. When you read that scripture, there is a comma. And then it continues and says, full of grace and truth. Then he says in verse 16 And of his fullness we have received And grace for grace For, for the law was given through Moses But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ So we can say in this journey of salvation we need, the, the, we need the gift which is known as the grace. This is the gift of salvation. So you can add it as a symbol of salvation. Therefore, we need to work out our salvation. And we said that, that to work out our salvation, we are so conscious. And today we are going to continue. So church of God, today I came to tell you that salvation is a continuous process. It is not a one-time event. What do I mean by this? Salvation has a three, what we call the three tenses. From the one tense. So there is salvation in there is salvation in past. And there is salvation in the present. And there is salvation in future. But on our context, all these three must align one at one eight, must align themselves. But when we say about salvation in past, it is the greatest history. That Jesus died on the cross. That he died on the cross. Therefore, we can say as Paul says in the book of first in the book of Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. He accept us. Uh, let us go there. Second Timothy. Amplified, please. Timothy Pili. Amplified. Second Timothy 1 9. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 1 9. The Bible says, yes. For it is He who delivered and saved us and called us with a calling. Up. But it is He who delivered and saved us. So we see this on the works, on the finished works of the cross. So two thousand years ago, Jesus delivered from the penalty of sin. This was the greatest history that ever happened to every human kind. That's why Paul says, He has saved us. He has saved us. The past. Therefore, this salvation that we obtain from the cross we need to maintain it then bring us to the salvation in presence as that's what Paul says in this presence work out the salvation with fear and trembling so our major focus is his presence so after finishing this presence, we shall go to the future. The 
Bible says, in a moment of a second, our body shall be changed. This is salvation in future. Which is not as glorification. We shall have new bodies. But now let us speak about salvation in presence. This is the major process. process. As I said that Paul and Moses us to work out our own salvation. And that is our topic today. Work out your salvation. If we so neglect this salvation, how shall we escape it? Hallelujah. Amen. vizuri. Present, future, mean past, present, and future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, where we have read. He has seen two statements. He has saved us. And what the Kolkadadi has read, he has saved us and he has called us to the life of holiness. Summer present. Hallelujah. So, salvation in presence is not that we need to maintain it. It's not that we had to the process of sanctification. Because it is a process we are being saved. It involves to be set apart. It is whereby God is telling us to be set apart. God is telling us to be holy. Whereby God is telling us that we need to attain the Christ like nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can say that salvation has a great impact in our present. So, what do I mean by working out our salvation? Point number one is to, it is to be being conscious that you may not offend God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 Amplified please. <laughs> Ephesians 5.15 It says Look carefully Then how you walk Live purposefully And worthily And accurately Not as the unwise And witless Repeat like once again people to hear Look carefully Look carefully Then how you walk And how you walk Hallelujah Look carefully Look how you walk. NLT says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore we can say, to be cautious, is to be wise. Is to be wise. Is to live a life with full of wisdom. That you may not offend God. We can also say to work out to work out our salvation. Is to have self evaluation. In order to avoid anything that may offend God. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Amplified. Thirteen five, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians thirteen verse five. It says, "Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruit of it." Hallelujah. Repeat again. Examine, examine, and test, and test, and evaluate, and evaluate your own selves, your own self speak up. Of. Hallelujah. Ever since you came to this journey of salvation, you always have a personal evaluation. Whether you are walking on the right path. Hallelujah. Amen. Guza Jiraniako. 
Muuliza ama do you do yourself ever do you evaluate yourself? Je, wewe unajiangalia mwenyewe? Haleluya. What is to evaluate? Basi kujiangalia nini? Is to look upon yourself. Ni kujiangalia mwenyewe. Check your life. Angalia maisha yako. To have a test of yourself. Kujijaribu mwenyewe. To do your own exams. Ufanye mtihani wako mwenyewe. Check whether you are right. Uangalie kama uko sawa. Haleluya. Haleluya. Then NLT says examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Hallelujah. Amen. Is your work of salvation genuine? Je, safari yako ya uko? Titus 1 verse 15 to 16. Tito 1. For many of them profess to know God. Ana wengi wanasema wanamjua Kristo. But by their works they deny him. Lakini kwa matendo wanamkata. They are abominable. Yaani matendo yao ni machukizo. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, basi self evaluation. Kujiangalia mwenyewe. We can also say Naweza pia kusema work out your salvation. Kufanyia kazi wako wako. Is to maintain the garment of to is to maintain your garment. Ni kulinda lile vazi lako. Which is the gam, which is the beauty of salvation. Ambao ni urembo wa wokovu. In this garment. Katika vazi hili. It must be kept clean. Lazima liwekwe safi. We spoke about the garment. Tulizungumza juu ya vazi. And we said that. Tulisema. That those who are called to the salvation of God. Wale ambao wameitwa kwa wokovu. God has clothed them with a robe of righteousness. Bwana amewabadilisha vazi la haki. Therefore basi if you don't have the robe of righteousness kama una vazi la haki the bible says biblia inasema you shall be cast out to hell utatupwa nje jehanamu therefore maintain that garment basi linda lile vazi Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 wefeso 5:27 the bible speaks of jesus biblia inazungumza juu ya yesu coming to speak the church of god akija kunena kwa kanisa la bwana now as the bride of christ sasa kama bi harusi wa kristo holy mtakatifu and without wrinkles ambaye hana kukunazi and without any spots ambaye hana madoa therefore maintain that garment that we may walk in this so great salvation ili ukaweza kutembea katika wokovu so we can say basi tunaweza kusema work out our own salvation fanya wokovu wetu kazi to hear sin ni kuchukia dhambi all forms of evil na kila aina ya wovu and live it a godly life na kuishi maisha ya kiungu titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 12 Tito 2:11 For the grace of God has appeared to all men. Maana neema ya Kristo imeonekania wote. Teaching us to say no to ungodliness. Kitufunza kusema hapana kwa the grace of God tells us. Kwa hivyo neema ya Mungu inatuambia. That we need to walk a holy life. Tunastahili kutembea maisha matakatifu. That we should say no to sin. Tunapaswa kusema hapana kwa dhambi. Psalm 34 verse 14. Zaburi 34:14. The Bible said depart from evil. Bibi inasema ondokea wovu. Do good. Na utende mema. And pursue peace. Na ufuatilie amani. And want to maintain it. Na ufanyie kazi kwa hiyo. Haleluya. Haleluya. Therefore work out your salvation. Basi fanya wokovu yako. Let's see. Second Timothy chapter 9, chapter 1 verse now where we have read. Timotheo wa pili moja. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. He has saved us. Ametuokoa. But my main emphasis. Lakini God has called us to 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 our holy life. Bwana ametuita kwa maisha matakatifu. Let's live a holy life. Basi ishi maisha matakatifu. This will help you to maintain that salvation. Hii itakusaidia kulinda ule wako. Work out our own salvation. Kufanyia kazi wokovu wako. We can say. Tunaweza kusema. To live a spiritual life. Ni kuishi maisha ya kiroho. And not a carnal life. Na sio maisha ya mwili. What do I mean by spiritual life? Namaanisha nini kusema is to feed on the things of the spirit. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 5. All the way to verse 8. The Bible speaks of two things. Living in the spirit. For they that live in the spirit. They please the things of the spirit. But they that walk in the carnalness. They please on the things of the carnal. Where are you? Hallelujah. Live in the spirit. Therefore, all those things that enables us to work out our salvation. Church of God. I know there are many ways that enables us to work out our salvation. Therefore, allow me to go deep by deep. Allow me to speak some some of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of them is follow Jesus Christ. Cha kwanza ni fuata Kristo Yesu. Hallelujah. Amen. Follow Jesus Christ. Fuata Kristo Yesu. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Wa Korintho wa kwanza mmoja 18. Is a scripture that we know so much. The Bible says for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible is telling us. Biblia inatuambia that the message of cross 
Yani habari za msalaba. Is foolishness. Ni upumbavu. We can say that. Naweza kusema. They that are not they, they that are not following the cross. Wale ambao hawafuati msalaba. God has given them a foolishness spirit. Bwana amewapatia roho ya upumbavu. Therefore those who are being saved. Kwa hivyo kwa leo nao kolewa. It is the power. Ni nguvu. Therefore we will speak about the cross. Basi tukizungumza juu ya msalaba. We speak about the power of salvation. Tunazungumza juu ya nguvu ya wokovu. This power of salvation. Nguvu hii ya wokovu. It is where we saw the finished works of the cross. Ndipo tulipo na kazi ya msalaba iliyokamilika. Why should we follow Jesus Christ? Nini tumfuate Yesu Kristo? One thing is the power of our salvation. Ni kwa sababu yeye ni nguvu za wokovu. We say that is the way. Ndio njia. He is the path. Yeye ndio njia. And the other of our salvation. Mwanzilishi na mkamilishi wa Yesu. We say that is the assurance is the assurance of our salvation. Basi yeye ni thibitisho la wokovu. Therefore follow Jesus. Basi mfuate Yesu. For you to remain in this salvation. Ili ukasalia katika wokovu. You must follow Lord Jesus. Lazima umpate Kristo. Because is the way of to redemption. Maana yeye ndio njia ya kuelekea kwa sababu ya forgiveness of our sins. Yeye ndiye njia kuelekea kwa sababu ya 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 kuelekea kwa
Yeye ndiye is the strength of our salvation. Yeye ndiye nguvu ya uokovu. He has given us the victory over over sin. Ametupatia nguvu ama ushindi. That we may serve God in holiness. Ya kwamba tukaweze kumtumikia Mungu katika utakatifu. And that we may stand on him. Ya kwamba tukaweze kusimama kwake. That we may serve God in holiness and righteousness. Ya kwamba tukaweze kumtumikia Mungu katika utakatifu. All the days of our lives. Katika siku zetu zote. Follow Jesus. Fuata Yesu. Because he's the rock. Maana yeye ni mwamba. The foundation of our salvation. Msingi wa uokovu wetu. He's the only sure foundation. Yeye ndiye msingi wa dhabihu. We must stand on. Follow Jesus. Because he's the cup. The joy of our salvation. He's the one who gives us divine joy. Even in times of trials and tribulation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 verse 218. Though the victory may not blossom. No fruit. No fruit may be on the vines. Though the labor of the only may fail. And the fields hit no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold. There will be no hurt in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. To find joy. Follow Jesus in this work of salvation for you to maintain it because he's the well the freshness of our salvation that whoever drinks on this water will never last again. Therefore follow Jesus is the redemption of our salvation. John the Apostle says Beyond, beyond the lamb who takes our sins away is the redemption of our salvation. Follow Jesus because he's the giver of grace which is the gift of salvation. Follow Jesus because he's the giver of the spirit which is the seal of our salvation. Therefore whoever has not the spirit of God has no Christ in him. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Tell your friend, follow Jesus. No matter what the situation, follow Jesus. Don't quit the race, but follow Jesus. Work out your salvation. How to maintain it. First step, follow Jesus. Second point, Know your identity. And avoid sin. Know your identity. And avoid sin. Hallelujah. Do you know do you know your identity? Kadaji with your microphone. Who are you? What is your purpose here on earth? Teacher Susan. Praise God. I'm Kevin Kadaji. My main purpose in this life, uh, since I'm a Christian, my purpose is to live a life that is pleasant before God and uh, fulfill His will on earth and in heaven. Ivo, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kuna watu wajia ongea hapa. Desmond. Ken. I want to appear microphone. We want to know whether we're in the same journey of this salvation. Who are you on this earth? What is your purpose on earth? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Desmond. I'm born again. And uh, my purpose, if you read John chapter 17, it says, at the prayer that Jesus prayed, uh, that I may know him. Yeah, so my purpose is to know God, uh, to grow in his knowledge and to understand his will, uh, that I may work in his purpose. Amen. Kennedy? God. Amen. My purpose is to know the will of God in my life. What is that will? <laughs> to Esther. Amen. 
Hallelujah. To the online, what is your purpose? Paul the Apostle says in Romans chapter 1 verse 1, Paul a bold servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 to 20, we see Apostle Paul saying that I'm bold by the, I, I'm, we see that Apostle Paul is a great ambassador. So we can say that Paul, one major mandate of him was to represent Jesus Christ on earth. Therefore, in this journey of salvation, which we are saying, in order for us to work out our salvation, we need to know our identity. One of the greatest identity in the Bible is to be a great ambassador. John the Baptist says, I mean, John the Apostle says, John the Baptist came that he may bear witness to the light, which was the light of men. So we can never point from there. Being a ambassador of Christ is to bear a witness. He turns around and says in Acts chapter 1 verse 7, you shall receive power and you shall become witnesses from Samaria unto Decapolis. So as Christian walking in this journey of salvation, in order for us to work out our salvation, let us have a life full, full, of, full of godly works. Let us not be idle, but let us fulfill the greatest ambassador role. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter chapter 5. Yes, he are the light of the world. In John chapter 9, chapter 9 verse 5. He said that I am the light of the world. Then he turned around and said in Matthew 5. Calling us as Christian is the light of the world. So be a light of the world, church of God. For you to maintain this salvation. Be a light of the world. Do not be idle. Go out and bring the gospel of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you an ambassador of Christ? Are you an ambassador of Christ? Ever since you received the great salvation of God, how many souls have you won for Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing about knowing your identity, it helps us to live a holy life which is a process of also a part of sanctification because if you know your identity one thing self-evaluation is a must even I as I'm preaching here before I stood here I have to evaluate myself whether I am standing before the Lord holy hallelujah Amen. know your identity now another point on how to work out our salvation is what our sister Grace spoke to us this morning. But allow me to expound so we can say that to maintain our salvation we need to invest our soul in the kingdom of God. We are called to be kingdom investors. Kingdom investment are private investment that yield public dividends. So I, we, I want us to dissect the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God above all else, that is NLT, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so, my main emphasis is on amplified version. Amplified. Matthew 6, 33. Amplified. It's a scripture we know, but there are some, you know, versions help a lot. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They help a lot. 
Matthew, Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek, aim at, and strive after. First of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his ways of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given you besides. Hallelujah. Amen. But first and most importantly, seek. Zaidi Him at. Zaidi. Strive after. Nganalia. So we can say to invest our soul is to na constantly seek to aim at Kutazamia. to strive after Kunganania. and to chase the realms of God na in God's ya holiness and righteousness. Katika na haki in ya Mungu. single term, Kwa mamba you value your soul nafsi that you may attain Christ-like nature. Ye, kupata umbo la that is the what we mean by investing our soul. We can also say that that to invest our soul now, your part in, a, in, the, in, the, in King James verse Asamanga, seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That is part to seek to seek the aim or to seek God's realms of glory. Hallelujah. Now, and everything shall be added unto you. So when you seek God, there is always a result. Hallelujah. Now, this brings us to the second definition, which is to build the kingdom of God using your resources. To build the kingdom of God using your resources. Which are these resources? Can be financial resources. What God has blessed you. And can also be what God has invested in your life. Which is the mantle or the grace of God. Or a calling upon on your life. Now, having known that, we need to ask ourselves, how do we invest the kingdom of God in order for us to work out our salvation? There is a, there is a certain uh, psalmist says, Oh Lord God, show me myself in a mirror that I may know how you see me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People may see me as an intercessor. But Lord, what do you see of me? People may see me as a great minister. But what do you see of me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you see of me? What do you say of me? Am I investing in the kingdom of God that I'm working out my salvation? That question. Kuna problem. Hallelujah. So, we can say for us to work out our salvation, we must invest our soul in very seriously in the kingdom of God. That we may seek the realms of God. So for us to invest, we need to invest the word of God first. Because kingdom investors are investors who are committed. Who are committed themselves to every profit. To every, to every, uh, to every resources they use. So, as kingdom investors, we need to invest ourselves in the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and adonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So let the word of God dwell in you richly. For when your life is guided by the word of God, it's when God gives you scriptural revelation. We also say that one, we also say, we also say that an, one engine of sanctification is the word of God. The word of God is very important in our lives. That's why David said in Psalm 119, Oh Lord, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. That the word of God has the power 
power to cleanse our soul. The word of God has the power to sanctify our lives. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. We see the word of God has the power to train us to righteousness. The word of God has the power to correct us. Ever since you came to salvation of God. How many times do you study the word of God? microphone. Esther Esther Motanu Esther, give us one scripture you know in the Bible. If you don't study the word of God, I mean come scripture to do the word of God. Any script in the Bible? Whoever hears these things, things of mine and does them, I like it into a wise man who built his house on the rock and then descended the flood came, the wheat grew and built upon that house and it did not fall, but it was founded on the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pia, Brother Jonathan Pale. Mark 11, verse 24. Whatever things you pray, you will have that you receive them and you have them. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word of God is very important. It builds, it builds, it builds our faith. According to Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the word of God is very important. That's why Paul Rika, the, the director of Interna of Oremo Interna of Oremo International, the inter I mean Paul Rika, the international director of Oremo. Said the word of God is perfect. There is nothing to add on to it or to subtract it. It is just perfect. Then he said the word of God is sure. There is no ambiguity about it. He said the word of God is right. But whatever the word of God says is right. The commandment of God is always right. There is no fault on it. The word of God is pure. Meaning that there is no error on it. That the word of God is clean. That the word of God is without blemish. Because the word of God is true and righteous. Ever since you began to study the word of God. How many sermons can you preach up to us? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since we began to study the word of God, have you written any sermon that you can minister to us? Hallelujah. So for this reason, feed the word of God. Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that cometh from the mouth of the Lord therefore receive the word of God with meekness for our salvation make sure the word of God dwells in you richly for our own salvation let the word of God be upon your life observe it in order to love in order that you may grow for our own salvation. Let the word of God remain in you in order for you to be a true disciple of God for your own salvation. Let the word of God get attached unto you in order to serve others for the sake of our own salvation. Let the word of God dwell in you with me. That you may practice it. In order you may not be deceived. Let the word of God talk to you and also talk to others with joy. 
Let the word of God be in our lives and make it present into our lives for the sake of our salvation. So in conclusion we can say that in the investment of the kingdom of God there is always results. Therefore invest in the word of God. We can also say for us to invest in the key, our soul in the kingdom of God we need to invest ourselves in prayers and fasting because you cannot experience the mystery of the kingdom of God without prayer prayer is, the, prayer is a magical key it is through prayer that our spiritual man is strengthened. It is through prayer that we are able to know the mind of God. It is during prayer that we see Abraham received from God. Even to a point of God calling Abraham a friend of God. It is through prayer that sustains our lives. By prayer, we are able to conquer every forces of darkness. By prayer, we are able to work out our salvation. We are able to overcome every forms of sin. Jesus said man ought to pray and not to faint. How many times do you pray? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is our greatest, it is my greatest desire. We should be intercessors. Let us live a life of intercessor. So if you hear this intercessory group, come speak to, 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 to Sister Susan. I want to join the intercessory department. I want to be committed to the intercessory department. That I may stand for the sake of the church. That I may stand for the sake of the congregation. Be an intercessor. Jesus did not tell his disciples about stories. Most of the time he spent his time in prayer. I remember when he went to get this money. He, to, he took two of his disciples. I mean, he told his disciples, How don't you keep, when don't you watch? Yet, you are asleep. Can you, you mean, imagine this, the disciples, anyone who was a Jesus? Person who was anointed. Any person who was get up the anointing of prayer. But they could not join Jesus and get this man. Get this man, Jesus, and the Yomba. Uh -huh. Are you praying for your account <laughs> of your salvation? Hmm? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So in prayer, Come on, discover also fasting. <laughs> for the greatest of account of a man is in the account of the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, we get the spirit of intercessory. This is the Holy Spirit that quickens our mortal body to pray. Therefore, discover prayer and not a man. Hallelujah. Amen. Fasting is very important too. Also, early to prayer. By the way, we call intercessory and youth fasting. Now that tells us, do you have your own personal timetable for you to fast? When I was last week, Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about your personal Hallelujah. When I was last week, Hallelujah. I'm speaking about your personal. You see, akuna moja. Hallelujah. To sing God at Kanisa Imetangaza fasting or to inge fasting. No. Fasting is for the help of a spiritual life to build your faith, to, to help you grow. Hallelujah. Amen. So have the desire to fast. Not because the church has said so. Not because the a leader of a department has said so. But also have your own personal time to fast. Hallelujah. Amen. Another point to invest so. Invest in giving. 
We cannot preach without giving. Whether it's, whether it's preaching is giving. That's why whenever we minister, many people, in the, especially in the streets, you see someone has been touched by the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us learn to invest in giving. This is very important. Giving helps us for the church of God to grow. Giving is very important in life. That's why we have things like offering. We have to pay, we have to give, we have tithes. We also have to give in order to support the ministry. So use your resources to support the work of God. We can also say that another point of, of investing your soul is service. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. The Bible says, serve the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your strength. That what, okay, in, then it turns in Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Paul says, whatever you do, do it for the Lord. And not unto men. So we can say, serve it to God. Is not in vain. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. Serve the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Service is not about ministry only. Yani Come and wash the tents. You are working out your salvation. The greatest thing about service to God it brings you closer to holy brethren that you may edify one another. Now, therefore, have a, have a desire to service. Another point to invest soul is to have what we call evangelism mandate. Evangelism is very important. It is the heartbeat of Jesus Christ. So for you to continue to work out your salvation, we say let us be like Apostle Paul who says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 he was bound with chains for the gospel of Christ. He was the greatest ambassador. We can say that Paul he was a great evangelizer. So most of the time he engaged himself in evangelism. Going places to places preaching the kingdom of God. Jeff Church of God. Working out our salvation. When you are evangelizing it gives you the grace and the courage that you may stand and all on your salvation. You cannot go to evangelism when you are still working in sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So reach out to people about the gospel of Christ. If you are not evangelizing, you are scandalizing the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you scandalizing the kingdom of God? Uh -huh. An evangelist. And, uh, 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 there is someone told me that uh, an evangelist cannot be an evangelist unless the evangelized man has become an evangelist. Are you getting the point? An evangelist cannot be a true evangelist unless the person he has evangelized to becomes an evangelist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to go back. I bring those evangelists back. Hallelujah. Amen. So ever since you received the grace of evangelism, how many people have you brought to Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So Evangelism helps us to work out our salvation. Because it separates you away from the people in clubs. From the people in the sinful world. The purpose of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore we can say that 
Basi tunaweza kusema let us arise tuweze kuinuka and go and do the great commission tukafanye kazi kuu you don't have to be an evangelist si lazima uwe mwinjilisti evangelism is a universal call mwinjilisti ni mwito wa kila mmoja every person zungumza na kila mmoja to your neighbor kwa jirani hallelujah Amen. you can do it in a different ways unaweza kuifanya kwa njia tofauti when you go in social media evangelize there hallelujah there are many ways to of doing evangelism kuna njia nyingi ya kufanya uinjilisti hallelujah Amen. You see, umtu ali challenge sana. Now, Sister Grace, who brought you to holiness? Who put who nanya likubiria? Sister Violet. Sister Violet. So, a viol we can say that a violet is a complete evangelist. Amen. Because now the evangelist person is now standing near to minister to you. Hallelujah. Pigeon yes ma coffee. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Amen. Let that be that let that encourage us. Hiyo itotie moyo. Hallelujah. Amen. Ulileta wangapi? Hallelujah. So, another point. Kipengee kingine. On how to work out our salvation. Jinsi gani ya kufanyia ukufu? Embrace holiness. Kumbatia utakatifu. Ever since you received all in, you received the grace gift of salvation. Yaani tangia upokee ile neema. Have you embraced the virtue of holiness? Je, umekumbatia utakatifu? The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Yaani Biblia inasema katika Yeremia, ask of the old path. Uliza ile njia ya kati. And you shall find rest. Na wewe utapata pumziko. This path is a path of holiness. Basi njia hii ni njia ya utakatifu. So in this journey of salvation. Katika njia hii ya wokovu. For you to work out your salvation always. Kufanyia kazi wokovu wako kila siku. Fear and trembling. Kwa kuogopa na kutetemeka. Avoid every forms of vices. Basi okea kila wofu and embrace the virtue of holiness na ukumbatie yani utakatifu first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 watisalanike wa kwanza the bible says biblia nasema god does not call us to uncleanness bwana hajatuita kwa uchafu but to holiness lakini kwa utakatifu embrace holiness kumbatie utakatifu embrace holiness kumbatie utakatifu you embrace holiness je unakumbatia utakatifu in holiness there is joy katika utakatifu kuna furaha holiness reminds us yani utakatifu unatukumbusha that we have a great covenant with god ni kwamba tuna agano kubwa That's why that's when the writer of Hebrews says Ndio maana mwandishi wa Hebrews anasema Pursue peace with all men Fatilia amani na watu wote Hallelujah Amen Hallelujah Amen Iko hapa Follow peace with all men Fatilia amani na watu wote And holiness without which no man shall see the lord pasipo hiyo hakuna mwanadamu you embrace holiness je unakumbatia utakatifu as a nature of christ kama kama umbo la kristo you profess do you embrace holiness je unakumbatia utakatifu do you embrace holiness in your life je unakumbatia utakatifu maishani mwako people look at you watu wakikutazama what will they say watasema nini when you embrace holiness unapokumbatia utakatifu people will begin to have that nature will be to have that uh, what do you call it people will begin to have that character watu watakuwa na ile tabia holiness with this with this will distinguish you yani utakatifu utakutofautisha from the daughters of Jezebel to the daughters of God yani utakutofautisha kati ya mabitu ya Jezebel na wana John chapter John I think the book of John chapter 1 Yohana 1 verse 12 Mimi and to him who believed in him kwa yote aliyemwamini yeye he gave the power to become the sons of god niwapatia uwezo wa kufanyika wana wa mungu when you embrace holiness of god wakati unakumbatia utakatifu wa mungu people will begin to see a royal person walking watu wataona mtu mteule akitembea people will begin to see a person who is not, who is a son of god watu wataona mtu ambaye ni mtoto wa mungu people will begin to see the christ manifestation in your life watu wataona yule ule udhirika wa kristo katika maisha yako embrace yake. holiness basi kumbatia utakatifu embrace holiness Kumbatia tie utakatifu haleluya amina haleluya amen do you embrace holiness je unakumbatia utakatifu in places of your work katika mahala pako pa in association katika wewe katika kusanyiko lako in evangelism katika uinjilisti or what do people what do people say you are ama watu wanasema wewe ni nini haleluya ama ni nani hebu nguza jirani muulize what do people say about you o watu wanasema nini kwa kuhusu haleluya amen amesema je <laughs> Embrace holiness. Kumbatia utakatifu. Have a testimony. Kuwa na ushuhuda. One thing about holiness this is a great testimony. Yaani kuna ushuhuda. And this will draw people to great salvation. Na hii inaleta watu kwa wokovu. Have you ever met with someone like me? Let me give you an example of myself. Acha pia ni mfano. Wewe umewapatia my testimony. Uh, the time we went to Mr. to Mrs. Musoka's barrio. 
kwenye vikosi vya kile gari anita i told you tukifika matu mtasikia pasta 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 true sister susan of oh, grace you are there hallelujah so they can say that we can say that these people knew that if nelson can change oh, okay let me give you another example when we were at uh, crusade umoja there's a sister came and told sister nancy and evelyn come on nelson have your coca Go. You will not receive this promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. I can't get the point, the, the, the verse, but there were people in the church group. So, no, it is the book of John, 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 John 16. Thank you. John 16. We see why we need the Spirit of God in our lives. No, I think from, I think from verse, what speaks about comforter. Fifteen. Verse fifteen. A minute, a minute, let me check. Yeah, seven. Ah, uh, seven. Read. John 16, seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Hallelujah. We as the church of God, we are the most privileged church. Jesus said, if I don't go, the helper will not come. So this helper, who is the Holy Spirit, is the spirit of Jesus in us. So it was to come that he may show us the way he may convict the earth of its sin therefore embrace the spirit of God he is the greatest seal of our salvation so let us learn to fellowship with the Holy Spirit even I as a minister in here I need the spirit of God in my life. It's the spirit that gives me the power. Even sometimes I don't have the scriptures here. But the spirit signals, signals those scriptures into my mind. You can think that I'm reading, you can think that I'm quoting from like a like a like a, a suspended TV. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the spirit. Even to stand here. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Even to minister. It is the, it is the spirit of God. He is the one who gives the words. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can say that. 
Tunaweza kusema in order for us to work out our salvation. Ili sisi kufanyia kazi wa kufu. We need the fellowship with the holy brethren. Tunahitaji ushirika na You need to know the kind of people you are fellowshiping with. Lazima utambue aina gani ya watu unaoshirikiana nao. When you have two brethren. Ukiwa na wapendwa wawili. These people Watu hawa they will guide you. Watakuelekeza. These people Watu hawa they will correct you. Watakurekebisha. No matter how the how, how the painful the correction is. Haijalishi kule kurekebishwa kuna umiza vipi. It will help you for a benefit. Therefore, work out your salvation. That's what we say in this present, in this salvation in present. We cannot ignore the process of sanctification. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, these are just some of the ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, having known this, I want us to speak a little. Nataka tuzungumze kidogo. About salvation in future. Juu ya wokovu katika siku zichazo. The Bible says Apostle Paul says. Tume Paul anasema. Every athlete. Kila mkimbizi. That runs. Mbaya nakimbia. There is always a goal for a prize. Kila wakati ana lengo fulani. Now this is to tell us. Hii ni kutuambia. There is a great reward if you walk in this salvation. Kuna thawabu kuu ikiwa utatembea vyema katika wokovu. What is this prize? Basi what is the price for us? Now in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. 24 verse 13. The Bible says. That they that endure unto the end. They shall be saved. Now this is a process. Which is known as glorification. So when we talk about salvation in future. It is whereby. We shall be transformed in a glorious body. And we shall share the eternal glory with Jesus. There is a scripture that says in the book. I think in Timothy. That we shall. Be, we shall rule with Christ. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. God gives us about the work of the spirit. And he says oh, about the works of the angels. And he says are these not the military spirit? But I love the statement he says for the heirs of salvation. Are you getting that point? So which is this as of salvation? This is where we talk about the glorification. So we can say in a glorification period, which is salvation in future, we shall have new bodies. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 50 to 54. It speaks about the, the rapture. And the Bible says, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed to a new bodies. Not corruptible bodies. But incorruptible bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can say this glorification period. It's whereby we shall rule with Christ. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1. I think from verse 5. I think in verse 3. For God has called us to be priests and kings. In this glorification period, is whereby where we shall have a ceremony known as coronation. What do we mean by this? We shall have internal rewards. The rewarding of crowns. So this is my major point. When you come to the the salvation of God. After you have finished working out your salvation, there is an eternal reward which is the crowns. And all of us who are working in this journey of salvation, if we shall endure unto the end by working out our salvation, there are five crowns that everyone must receive. One, okay. Many people may have one crown. Some others will have many crowns. So I don't know the kind of crowns. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. We see a crown known as crown of righteousness. Crown of righteousness. 
Taji yake. Second Timothy 4:8 it says, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me on, only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Hallelujah. So we can say that it is a crown for those who are ready and waiting for the coming of Jesus. But these people must walk a righteous life. They must live a life, a good life, which is a righteous life. For you to receive this crown of righteousness. As you wait for the coming of Jesus, live a righteous life. We have another crown known as. In, known as Incorruptible crown. Uh, some other version uses the word imperishable crown. So we say that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 this is whereby Paul speaks of an athlete. And he says that First Corinthians 9:24. It says, "Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown." Therefore, I run thus, not with uns uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Hallelujah. So for you to obtain this crown, we have seen that Paul says that I discipline my body. You need to have self-control. In simple terms, it is a crown for those who have overcome the desires of the soul and the flesh. People who are trained with a great dress. People Watu, who are trained mefundishwa, that they have one focus umoja, that I may win the race ya in corruptible crown. Yani taji we have a crown known as the crown of life. Maisha, ama Many of them call it a matire crown. Wengi wanaita, yani taji la in the book of James chapter 1 verse 12 Yakobo, moja, uh, in James 1 12 we can read there and mini fungue revelation 2 10 James 1.12 James 1.12 It says Blessed is the man who endures temptations, temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Hallelujah. Revelation 2.10 says Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Tell your friend about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your friend the devil is about to throw you into prison. The devil is about to throw you into prison. That you may be tested. That you may be tested. Then he says, and you will have tribulation ten days. Therefore, be faithful until death. Tell your friend, be faithful until death. No matter the tribulation, and I will give you the crown of life. Hallelujah. So we can say that this crown is for believers who have patiently endured trials, the testing and the persecution. People who are believers who have endured persecution. Even to a point of death. Because of Jesus Christ. Because of, because of Jesus Christ. That's why here we are told that we must endure until to the end. For the devil is ready to cast some of us to prison. James says, 
He speaks about trials and tribulations. Even overcome of trials and tribulations. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Therefore the crown of life. Awaits you. Hallelujah. We have another crown known as the crown of glory. The crown of glory. Some other people call it the crown for soul winners. First Peter chapter 5 verse 2 and 4. First Peter chapter 5 verse 2 and 4. First Peter chapter 5 verse 2. Shepherd the flock of God which is among, among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Hallelujah. So we can say that, based on the scripture, it is a crown for every person who feed the flock of God. The pastors, the evangelists, the ministers of God, people with a mandate of great commission. There is a crown of glory. So those who are winning soul for Christ and you are walking in this salvation a reward of crown of glory shall be given unto you. And we have the last crown known as the crown for rejoicing. In the book of First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 First Thessalonians 2.19 it says, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? For you are our glory and joy. Hallelujah. Basically, Paul speaks about wiping of tears away. We shall rejoice. So we can connect this in the book of Revelation 21. When God says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more, there shall be no more sorrows. The crown of rejoicing. Now, having known those types of crowns, you as a Christian walking in this journey of salvation, ever since we began this topic, how many crowns? How many crowns? Do you, how many crowns do you think you will have? For many will, for many, for some will have many crowns. Whatever how God will do it, I don't know. But check your life. Do you have any type of crown that is awaiting for you? Let us arise and we go before the Lord. I want us to pray that God is going to give us the grace that we may work out our salvation. Where we have read. We say that being, to work out our salvation is to have a self-evaluation. Ever since you came to the great salvation of God,